Hi, and welcome to this quarter's webinar. We're going to be talking about a subject that's a real pain in the neck for a lot of you, judging from the emails I get. Automatic numbering. Whether it's numbering paragraphs or creating numbered headings, it's easy to get wrapped around the axle when working with these features in Microsoft Word. I'm hoping today's session will give you more confidence in using automatic numbering because mastering this feature opens up a lot of possibilities like bookmarks and cross-references. Here's what we're going to be covering today. First, I'm going to spend a few minutes walking you through a sample customization of an inline paragraph numbering scheme, like where your first level paragraph is numbered 1, 2, 3, your second level is numbered A, B, C, etc. Then I wanted to show you how you can save that customized paragraph numbering scheme into Word's list library so you can access it in the future. After that, we're going to go a little deeper into how to construct a more sophisticated numbering scheme and save it as a list style, which gives you more paragraph formatting options than saving it into the list library. The tutorials you're viewing today are part of a sort of subcourse called Bulletproof Paragraph Numbering. I call it a subcourse because it's actually part of three different main courses I offer Brief Builders Workshop, Assemble Documents Faster, and Lawyer's Guide to Microsoft Word Styles. That's because, as I mentioned, mastering automatic paragraph numbering opens up a lot of document automation possibilities. Once you've learned how to do even simple automatic paragraph numbering, then you can add and delete numbered paragraphs without having to renumber them yourself. With a long document, that can be a huge time saver. Plus, those same automatic paragraph numbers can become bookmarks you can then cross-reference throughout your document. Cross-referencing doesn't just mean repeating the paragraph number itself. You can also cite the page number that paragraph is on and the context, above or below, etc. Now that you know why this is important, let's get started with our first example, what I call inline paragraph numbering. The first type of paragraph numbering we're going to talk about is inline paragraph numbering, which looks like this. This is just your standard paragraph numbering scheme. In fact, you've probably already seen those buttons on your ribbon. You'll notice that there's both a single level and a multi-level button. Always choose the multi-level. Why? Even if you're only going to use one level anyway, this will give you more formatting flexibility with things like indentation. And why bother creating your own list as opposed to altering the existing lists? The problem with attempting to alter an existing list is that the changes, in my experience, seldom stick. Plus, the experience of defining your own list gets you familiar enough with the structure that you'll be able to diagnose and solve problems when lists go awry. This comes in particularly handy when you're working with documents others created. With all of the multi-level lists we're going to talk about, the starting place is the same. On the Home tab, click the drop-down next to the Multi-Level Numbering button in the Paragraph Command Group. Because this first tutorial is covering situations where you just want to number the paragraphs, not build an outline or table of contents, choose Define New Multi-Level List. Be sure to click the More button so you can see and work with the entire dialog box. Looks pretty overwhelming, right? Let me walk you through an example customization. I start off by unlinking level numbers from styles in the Link Level to Style dropdown. In this particular example, we're not doing headings or anything like that, so having each level linked to a style would just muck things up. Now that I'm on level 1, which is where this dialog box started, I choose the numbering style for this level and add a period after the 1. If legal style numbering is checked, I uncheck it. Obviously, if that's the kind of numbering you want, 1.1, etc., leave that checked. Next, I tell Word how I want the numbers and paragraph positioned. In this example, I want to indent the first line of the numbered paragraph 0.5 inches, so that would be aligned at 0.5, and wrapping the text back to the left margin. So that would be text indent 0, and set follow number width to tab character. To avoid having to do this entire positioning exercise down all nine levels, I click Set for All Levels which simply increments the Aligned At and Text Indent settings 0.5 for each subsequent level. 
So I have 0.5 for bullet or number position for first level, text position for first level, and then I want to increment each level at 0.5 inches. And then click OK. And that increments that same setting, 0.5 inches for each of the levels. Once I choose level 2, you notice that restart list after is now enabled. Obviously after paragraph 2, I want level 2 to restart at A, so I leave that box checked to have it restart at the previous level. Once everything is set the way I want, I click OK. Those settings get me this result. Pressing Enter after each paragraph should, in most instances, give you another paragraph with an automatic number. But what if you want to have A underneath that one you just created? If you want to start a lower level paragraph, there are three ways you can promote that paragraph to the next level or demote it to a previous level. Use the Increase Indent or Decrease Indent buttons on the Home tab, which is my preferred method. Or click the multi-level drop-down and choose Change List Level. Or use the Tab and Shift Tab method to promote and demote respectively. Now that last method requires that you have a particular autocorrect setting enabled. Go to the File tab, click Options, choose Proofing along the left hand side, and click the Autocorrect Options button. And make sure this box is checked on the Auto Format As You Type tab. At this point, you may be thinking to yourself, am I going to have to go through this entire exercise every time I want to use this paragraph numbering scheme? And the answer is, no, you don't. There are a couple of different ways you can save these once you've configured them. I'm going to go over a more complex method that's a little bit more flexible later in this course, but for now, I'm going to show you how to save this numbering scheme into your list library. Word has several default choices in the list library, but if none of those fit your specifications and you've created a custom one as we've done here, you can find it in the Lists in Current Documents section of the multi-level list drop-down. Then you can right-click on it and choose Save in List Library. Once you've done that, you'll be able to see your custom paragraph numbering scheme here in the list library. All right, you've gotten your feet wet, so to speak, with an introduction to the numbered list interface, and you've saved your simple inline paragraph numbering scheme into your list library. So, webinar over, right? Not quite. While the list library is a great tool for saving a favorite scheme into an accessible place, it's got some limitations. With any scheme in the list library, you're tied to the current definition of the style list paragraph. While you can certainly tweak that on the fly as we did a moment ago, you may start to find that cumbersome. After all, this feature is supposed to save you work, not give you a new checklist to run through every time you use it. List styles, however, give you the flexibility to embed paragraph formatting into each level of your numbered list. Plus, you can name your list styles and even share them with your colleagues if you come up with a particularly useful one. I mentioned earlier that the two tutorials we're going through today are part of my Bulletproof Paragraph Numbering course. Specifically, what you just watched is the lesson from Module 2, and now I'm going to take you straight into Module 5. We're skipping over a lot of intervening material, but I don't think that's going to prevent you from applying what you see here. Let's get started. Some of you have asked me how to save your favorite numbering scheme for future use and how to embed paragraph formatting, line spacing, spaces between paragraphs, etc., into your numbering scheme. Doing either of those things requires that we back up a bit. While you can save a list numbering scheme like the ones we've covered so far in the List Gallery by right-clicking it in the Lists in Current Documents section and choosing Save in List Library, that doesn't allow you to name your list something that you'll remember, nor does the Define New Multi-Level List dialog 
allow you to directly change paragraph formatting or other settings you may want to embed in a custom numbering scheme. To do those things, we'll need to deal with styles and define a new list style. The method I'm about to outline owes a lot to a method proposed by Ben Shore, a law firm technology consultant who's now creating user education content in Microsoft. It involves several steps, so hang in there with me. Before I delve into this admittedly multi-step procedure, let me give you the 50,000-foot view of what we're about to do. 1. Define one or more styles that contain the requisite paragraph formatting, spaces between paragraphs, etc. We're going to let the numbering scheme take care of the indentation and only embed into the styles those elements that we can't define within Define New Multilevel List. If you prefer to use any of the heading styles for any numbering levels, you can simply modify those, but I'll show you how to create brand new styles for numbered paragraphs. 2. Use Define New List Style to name our preferred numbering scheme and ensure that all future documents based on our normal template and any templates based off the normal template can access this numbering scheme. And 3. Within Define New List Style, go to the Define New Multilevel List dialog to define the numbering scheme and associate each level with our new styles. Associating each level of our numbering scheme with a style will allow us to customize paragraph formatting, spacing between paragraphs, etc., in ways we cannot within the Define New Multilist dialog. Give our numbering scheme somewhat more formatting flexibility and stability. Associate the appropriate numbering levels with outline levels that can then be pulled automatically into a table of contents or viewed in the navigation pane if either of those two functions is something the document needs. It may be that either goal 1 or 3 shown here isn't really relevant to you. For example, you may only be concerned with making sure your paragraphs have an extra space between them, or you may just want your numbering scheme to populate an automated table of contents, which would require associating the styles with outline levels. As I go through this example, I'll tell you which step you can skip if that particular goal isn't important to you. To start creating a new paragraph numbering style, open a new blank document, not strictly necessary, but a good precaution against pulling in another style setting. Then click the downward facing arrow on the end of the styles gallery and click create a style. You'll get a small dialog box, create new style from formatting to start, but you'll want to click modify to get to the fuller Create New Style from Formatting dialog box. Here's how we'll proceed. 1. First off, you'll want to rename your paragraph numbering style. Ben Shore recommends the naming convention Paranum Number, where number corresponds to the numbering level. Sounds good to me. By default, you'll probably find that style type is linked. You'll want to change that to Paragraph. To avoid having Word bring in any character level formatting, fonts, etc. That way your numbering scheme won't introduce new fonts into your document, it'll simply pick up whatever font you're already using. 3. Because I recommended that you start this whole process with a blank document, style based on is set to the normal style. If you're adept enough with styles to want to choose something else as a starting point, feel free. 4. Style for following paragraph will default to the same name as your new style. That way, when you press Enter, the next paragraph will continue that same numbering scheme at the same level, and you can promote or demote levels as you learned earlier. Just for the sake of ensuring that nothing funny goes on with the fonts, I chose the current body font, even though this is a paragraph style. That, admittedly, might have been superfluous. If you want to choose the headings font, you can do that as well, but it's just for the matter of making sure that this all conforms to the basic fonts in whatever template you have to be working in. If you want to be able to see this style in the Styles Gallery, on the Home tab, check this box. If that doesn't matter to you, you can uncheck it. I would leave this Automatically Update box unchecked if I were you, otherwise you may make some sort of formatting change within a paragraph that has this style applied to it, and you risk permanently altering the style itself rather than just the selected text. 
If you want to be able to use this style in new documents based on this template, for example, I'm in the normal template, be sure this radio button is selected because it isn't by default. Now we're going to set up the paragraph formatting by clicking Format, then Paragraph. Within the Paragraph dialog box, you've got some decisions to make. First, does this paragraph numbering level need to correspond to an outline level, say for heading or other text that needs to be part of a table of contents? If so, use this outline level drop-down to choose the corresponding level. If not, you can leave the outline level as body text, as I'm going to do here. Next decision, do you want vertical spacing before and or after your numbered paragraphs? If so, use the spinners, the up and down arrows, to set the values or type points, inches, or centimeters directly into the spacing before and spacing after fields. Most users choose points because they most closely correspond to the text size. If you're using 12-point text, for example, you probably want 12 points of space after each paragraph, the setting here. If you don't want that sort of space inserted between paragraphs of the same style, then you would check this box. I'm going to leave that unchecked because it basically negates this setting that's here. Do you want single spacing? A more relaxed spacing like 1.15 or something else? Choose the appropriate value for line spacing here. Click OK to exit the paragraph dialog box and return to the Create New Style from Formatting dialog box. And click OK again to finish. How many of these new styles will you need? It depends on how many levels of numbering you want to use. To save a little time in creating levels 2 through 9, you can substitute the previous levels, style name, example Paranum1, in style based on instead of normal and only make the necessary modifications to steps 4 through 14, for example, changing the outline level in step 10. Now comes the step that will enable us to save our entire numbering scheme for future documents. Click on the multi-level list drop-down on the Home tab and select Define New List Style. You'll get the Define New List Style dialog box. You'll want to, number one, name your new list style here. Here I'm demonstrating a basic paragraph numbering scheme to use in pleadings. And two, choose new documents based on this template. So this new list style is saved in the normal template, the default template I'm using now, for me to reuse whenever I want. Now I'm going to click the Format button at the bottom left and choose Numbering to define the actual numbering scheme. And doesn't this look familiar? At least it should if you've been following along with this series. Again, I'm going to click More so I can deal with the entire dialog box. Earlier, I stepped you through this dialog box, which was then called the Define New Multi-Level List dialog box, but here it's called Modify Multi-Level List. So you should be familiar with most of this. Here's what I want you to notice now. I'm going to link the first level of the multi-level list to one of my new paragraph numbering styles, Paranum1, which is linked to Outline Level 1 in the Paragraph dialog box. Because my basic paragraph numbering scheme is going to indent one half inch progressively throughout, I'm going to take advantage of the Set for All Levels button to set all of the position information automatically for each level. I move on to Level 2 of the Paragraph Numbering Scheme and link that level 
to style Paranum 2, which in turn is linked to Outline Level 2 in the Paragraph dialog box. I make sure that Level 2 restarts its numbering after Level 1. I move on to Level 3 of the Paragraph Numbering Scheme and link that level to the style Paranum 3, which in turn is linked to Outline Level 3 in the Paragraph dialog box as demonstrated earlier. And I go progressively through each of the nine levels doing the same thing over and over. Finally, I give this a list num field name. That's totally optional, but it can become important if you choose to use the list num field for any fancy cross-referencing work. We'll cover the potential uses for this later in the course. Now I'm going to click OK. Just do one last visual check that I have everything associated with its correct style. And it's handy that this preview window actually allows me to do that. And then I'm going to click OK and OK again. Now I'm going to test out my new list style. OK, so far so good. I hit Enter and I now have an, a new paragraph 2 and I can increment or decrement the levels using the increase indent or decrease indent buttons here or go here and do change list level And because I have actually chosen to link each of these styles to outline levels, as seen here, I can go to the View tab and click on Navigation Pane, and I can actually see these in here. Next time you click on the multi-level list button, you'll see your saved list styles in the List Styles section of the drop-down. By the way, I could also filter that to just show the list styles in this list. So now I have a bona fide list style I created myself and can use forever and ever. To prove it, let's go to our full list of styles and find it. On that Styles pane, Click the Manage Styles button on the bottom. That'll take me to the Manage Styles dialog box. The easiest way to find our new list style is to use Sort Order to organize the list by type. List styles will be all the way at the bottom. or very close to it, and it will be signified by a bullet point icon to the left. Here's our basic paragraph numbering style right here. I can modify it, or I can delete it if I so choose. And here's how you can copy list styles from a document into your normal template or from your normal template, assuming you selected new documents based on this template when you defined your list style, into a pre-existing document that was created before your normal template had this new style. 
click on Import Export, and see this Organizer dialog box. At this point, I could simply take this style, and assuming it wasn't already there, copy it over into that new document in progress. And I would have that list style available to use in that document as well. As I mentioned earlier, the demonstrations you've seen in this webinar are two lessons in a multi-module video-based subcourse called Bulletproof Paragraph Numbering. I call it a subcourse because the Bulletproof lessons are already included in their entirety in three of my other courses, Assemble Documents Faster, Brief Builders Workshop, and Lawyer's Guide to Microsoft Word Styles. That's because automatic paragraph numbering enables and or is dependent upon features like bookmarks and cross-references, creating custom styles and templates, etc. I haven't offered it as a separate course in a long while because it's become part of other courses, but that changes today. Starting today, and for a limited time, I'm offering these lessons as a standalone course for only $7. If automatic paragraph numbering has been a problem for you in the past, this would be a particularly good upgrade for your skill set. Bulletproof paragraph numbering not only covers the basic paragraph numbering scheme we went deep on today, but it also covers other formats, such as numbering with text included, like article and section, with or without the features necessary to include those numbers in an automated table of contents, and using embedded font formatting and style separators to drive complex requirements like this real-life example a reader submitted, making it easy to create an automatic table of contents based on the numbering scheme. Plus, there are downloadable exercises, and you'll get the opportunity to upload your completed exercises for my feedback in case you're having issues. If you're interested in learning more about this recently updated and expanded course, click the link above in the right-hand corner or in the description below now. I hope these demonstrations have given you some new confidence in dealing with automatic paragraph numbering. Try some of this out for yourself, and as always, if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below and let me know what challenges you're having. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.